All right. Good afternoon and welcome to Master Talker Online Class. In today's video, we will be talking about um, isotope slash isotopy. Isotopy. Okay. Now, um, the difference between this and this. Isotope are the elements themselves. Why isotopy is the phenomenon. Okay. So we say that what isotopy is the phenomenon whereby different atoms with the same uh, mass number has the same atomic number. Sorry, with different mass number has the same atomic number. When you have, um, uh, for example, let me show you something like this: H uh, H11, H21, H3. Uh, sorry, H31. Now, if you look at this, if you look at this, you see that this atom has the same atomic number but different mass number. So whenever an atom has the same atomic number but different mass number, that atom is called an isotope. So this is what isotopes of hydrogen. Isotopes of what? Hydrogen. Okay? Uh -huh. So what isotopy is the phenomenon whereby this atom has the same atomic number but different uh, mass number. So please note the difference between isotope and isotopy. Okay? Uh, and don't forget that um, an atomic number is equally the number of uh, is equally proton number and is equally electron number. So you can say that uh, isotope is the phenomenon whereby an atom has the same proton number but different mass number, or we say the same electron number but different uh, mass number. Okay, very very important to note. So this means that what. Um, isotope exists due to what? Difference in neutron. Yes, difference in neutron. Because don't forget that the mass, the mass number of an element is simply because we have what? We have uh, what we have. That is uh, proton number plus what? Neutron number. I get it now. So in this one now, in this case, you see that the mass number here is one for this one. And the the proton number is something as like the atomic number. So the proton number is 1. So to get the neutron number, it simply says the neutron number there is what? 1 minus 1, which is what? 0. This one has the neutron number of 0. But this one has the neutron number of 2 minus 1, which is 1. This one has the neutron number of 3 minus 1, which is 2. So the reason we have isotope is because of difference in neutron number. Okay? Yes, difference in neutron number. So take note of that. Okay, so let's note. Note that element or atom that has their relative atomic mass as a whole number. If their relative atomic mass is a whole number, then they don't have isotope. But if their relative mass is not a whole number, then they have an isotope. Okay, so let's note that. That is why the mass number of chlorine, the mass number of the, so the relative atomic mass of chlorine, don't forget that what? That the relative atomic mass of an atom, if it is a whole number, then it does not have isotope. But if it's not a whole number, it has isotope. For example, now chlorine now has um, 35.5 as their relative atomic mass. So what does it mean? Since it has point, it means that it has isotope. Okay, we can say that we have isotopes of chlorine. Yes, we can say that we have isotopes of uh, chlorine. And isotopes of chlorine are, I think, Cl17 here. I think they have 35 and 37, I guess. Cl37 chlorine, okay? So that is that. But if, for example, now, the, the relative atomic mass of magnesium is 24. So, and 24 is the whole number. For magnesium, the relative atomic mass of magnesium is 24. And 24 is the whole number. Therefore, magnesium does not have what? An isotope, okay? Don't forget that. We can use um, isotope to calculate the relative atomic mass of, uh, of an element, okay? We can use isotope to calculate it, and it has a formula. The formula said that what? The relative atomic mass of an element is simply percentage of isotope. Percentage of isotope all over 100, because total percent is 100, times their mass number their mass number over one okay for the first one 
plus the second one, the same thing, percentage of what? Isotope all over what? 100 times what? The mass number. Very simple formula to remember. If, you, if there are three, you do the same thing. Or you say that what? The relative atomic mass of an, of an atom or element uh, is equally the ratio. We can, we can do it in terms of ratio. Ratio ratio of the isotope all over the total ratio times times what the same mass number of that particular one okay plus the same thing again ratio of isotope all over what the total ratio times what the mass number okay so this is very very simple formula to remember we can solve some question that are related to that let's solve some question relating to to that can i clean yes all right so example right example we have that what the isotopes The isotopes of chlorine, the isotopes of chlorine are uh, are thirty five Cl seventeen and thirty seven Cl seventeen. Okay, and and relative and the relative abundance of 75% and 25% respectively respectively calculate the relative atomic mass of the chlorine solution okay so what do we do? Don't forget the formula. The relative atomic mass using isotope, okay, is simply what? Percentage of what? Um, isotope of isotope. Let me write the isotope of the first one we are seeing, which is what? Um, percentage of isotope, okay, let me write it like this. All over what? 100. Because total percent is 100 times the mass number. Plus, the same thing again. Percentage of isotope of the second one times the mass number divided by what? 100. So what do we have? Let's do that. So the percentage of the, fir the first one is 75 all over what? 100 times the mass number. Don't forget that mass number is always written at the, at the top. And then you need to know that the reason for isotope is, is because we have difference in mass number. So we are taking 35 for this one plus... Percentage of the other one is what? 25. Because they say respectively. Respectively means 75 is for the first one. Why 25 is the second one? So 25 over 100 times what? 37 over 1. So what do we have? If you do the math, you are going to have 26.25 plus 9.25, which will give you 35.5. Okay? 35.5 as simple as that the next question let's take one more question from there next question said uh, if the mass if the mass of 35 and 37 isotopes of the same chlorine are, are in the ratio 3 is to 1 respectively then calculate the relative atomic mass of that chlorine don't forget that relative atomic mass of, a, of an atom does not change we know that the answer is 35.5 but let's just solve it okay so we have that the ratio so solution the relative atomic mass 
of the chlorine should be what? Uh, ratio of isotope all over what? Total ratio times the mass number. Okay? Plus the same thing again. Ratio ratio of isotope all over what? Total ratio times what? Mass number. Very simple. So what do we do now? Ratio of the first one is what? 3 over total ratio 3 plus 1, 4. Over 4 times what? The mass number of the first one is 35. Plus, the other one is what? 1 over 4 times 37. So if you do this, you are going to have... Uh, do this, you are going to have 35.5. You can try it. 35.5. As Get this one. Get this one. Sum it together. You get 35.5. Okay? So let's solve another question. My time. Okay? So, number three. Number three said, an atom, an element... An element with relative atomic mass of 16.2 contain, contain two isotopes, two isotopes, 16x8. With Abundance of with abundance of ninety percent and X M eight with relative abundance of ten percent. Then I said find M. Okay, we want to find M. Solution. This is a very simple question. We know that what the relative atomic mass is certain as what percentage of isotope all over what uh, 100, which is the total percent 100 times what the mass number plus percentage of isotope all over what 100 times what the mass number of the second one. Okay. So now, they are giving me that the relative atomic mass is what? 16.2 is equal to, the percentage of the first one is what? 90 over 100, the total percentage, times, don't forget that the mass number is always at the top. The mass number of the first one is what? 16. Plus, percentage of the other one is what? 10. Even if it was not given, you know that total percentage is 100. Just say 100 minus that first one, 90. You get it 10. So 10 over 100, the total percent. Times the mass number of this one is given as M. Okay? So let us do that. To get that is very simple. This is what? 16.2 is equal to... If you do here, you are going to get 14.4 plus... Do this one, you are going to get 0.1 M. So if you collect light terms... Let me finish it up here. If you collect light terms, you are going to have 16.2 minus 14.4 is equal to 0.1 M. So, we are going to have that. Um, so, if you subtract, you are going to have 16.4, uh, 16.2, and 14.4. And this is 12, I think it's 8. Okay? And uh, 1 was 1.8. So, 1.8 is equal to 0 0.1 M. So, my M is now 1.8 divided by 0 0.1, which is what? 18. So the mass number of the second one is what? Is simply 18. Okay. Very simple. So the next one, question number four. The next one, question number four. Question number four. Question number four said, if 100 atoms of element x 
contain 70 atoms of X9 and 30 atoms of X11. Calculate the relative atomic mass of X. Okay? This is a very simple question. So how do we get that now? It's very simple. Solution. Don't forget, the relative atomic mass is simply what? The number of atoms here is what? 70. All over the total number of atoms, which is 100, times the mass number, which is 9, for the first one, plus, for the second one, you have what? 30 over the total 100 times what? This one is uh, 11. Okay? So, if you do that, you are going to get, um, everything will give you 9.6. So the relative atomic mass there is what? Is 9.6. As simple as that. Another question we need to uh, get is what? Which of the following is suitable for determining different isotopes present in an element? Which exhibits isotope? Which of the following is used? In fact, you should note, you should know that um uh, giga, giga molar counter, giga molar counter is used to determine isotope. Please, giga, giga molar, giga molar counter. Okay, giga molar counter is used to determine the isotope of an element. That is an equipment that is used to, to determine the isotope of an element. Okay, so that is that. Now let's move into relative atomic mass let's move into relative atomic mass you know um isotope helped us to find the relative atomic mass so but we can find the relative atomic mass of other elements that does not have an isotope okay so let's move into relative atomic mass all right relative mass a relative atomic mass is the number of times an atom of an element is high is heavier than one over 12 of atom of carbon 12 write that down that the relative atomic mass is the number of times an atom of an element is heavier than one over 12 one over 12 of what an atom of uh, carbon 12 Okay, so please write that down. So, an example if an element, sorry, if the relative atomic mass of sodium, if the relative atomic mass of sodium is 23, write that down. If the relative atomic mass of sodium is 23, it means that sodium is 23 times heavier than 1 over 12 of an atom of uh, carbon 12. Okay, note that relative atomic mass is not as important as atomic mass. Sorry, it's a mistake. A relative molecular okay, we are not going to relative molecular mass. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Note that what the relative atomic mass of an atom is not as important as atomic number of that atom. Okay. Because atomic number is used to determine the properties of an atom, but the relative atomic mass is not used to determine the property of that atom. Okay. So please take note of that. Don't forget that if the relative atomic mass of an atom is a whole number, then that atom does not have what? An isotope. But if it is not a whole number, it has an isotope. Okay? All right. So the next one we'll talk about is the relative molecular mass. Relative molecular mass. Okay. 
This is the sum of the relative atomic mass of all the atoms in one molecule of a substance. Okay? Relative molecular mass is defined as the number, okay, number of times. Another way you can define it is the number of times one mole. The other one is one atom. Relative atomic mass is the number of times one atom of an element is heavier than one over 12 atom of what? Carbon 12, okay? But in this one is that what? The relative molecular mass is the number of times one mole, one molecule of an element or a compound is heavier than one over 12 uh, of atom of carbon 12. And that way you can define it is what? It is the sum of all the relative atomic mass of an atoms that are made up of the, the compound. Okay? So let's take some calculations to illustrate what we are doing. Example 1. They said, determine Vitamin D, the molar mass, you can call the molar mass or relative molecular mass, the molar, the molar mass or molecular mass or relative molecular mass of the following, okay, the first one they said is a ammonium, Huh? Ammonium sulfate. Push here now. Okay. Ion two. Tetra. Also. Sulfate six number three sodium carbonate decahydrate number four copper. Copper sulfate pentahydrate. Okay? And they gave us that um, that N is 14. Even without being told, please, you're supposed to go on this thing that N is 14. Hydrogen is 1. Sulfur is 32. Oxygen is 16. Uh, Ion Fe, Ion is 56, Sodium 23, Calcium 12, and Copper 64. Okay, one minute, let me check my time. So let's continue. Solution. Ammonium sulfate. Now, ammonium is what? N, uh, is it NH3 or NH4? NH4, please. NH3 is ammonia. NH4 is what? Ammonium. So, ammonium sulfate is what? NH4 to SO4. Okay? Yes, because... Um, this is NH4 minus, uh, sorry, plus, then SO4 2 minus. So when they combine, you are going to have um, NH4 uh, 2 SO4, uh, SO4 1. Okay, so that is that. So if we have this now, if we know this, so the, the, the molar mass, the molecular mass, of this atom should be what? 
nitrogen is what one but because of this is two okay so i have two nitrogen plus uh, two times four is eight so i have eight uh, hydrogen okay plus sodium uh, sulfur is one and then four oxygen so which is what two bracket uh nitrogen is what 14 two bracket 14 plus eight bracket one plus 32 plus what four bracket 16 so if you multiply and add all of that you are going to get 132 gram per mole okay that is the si unit of um, uh, molar mass okay you can call it relative molecular mass gram per mole so that is that the only problem is having is getting the atomic number of uh, all these things you need to know the atomic number of at least the first 20 elements you need to know the atomic number okay but if you are new in chemistry as time goes on you will be knowing them gradually it's not something you just know immediately okay it's gradual process so the next one said uh ion 2 tetra also surface 6 ion 2 tetra also surface 6 that is F E is ion, tetrahedral surfaces is SO4, SO4, okay? Ion 2, tetrahedral surface 6. So, how do we get this? This is F E minus, so F E plus, okay? Plus uh, SO4 minus to give uh, F E SO4, okay? So, if we have this, if we have this, we are going to have that F E, ion is 56, that is F E plus s plus four oxygen okay so what do we have now 56 plus our s is 32 plus 4 into 16 so what do we have if you add them together they're going to have 152 gram per mole okay you know it can be written like this or you write it gram per mole like this uh -huh. any of the two are the same thing okay the next one Number three. Number three said sodium carbonate decahydrate. Deca means 10. Okay, that is 10 hydrogen. Sodium uh, carbonate. Sodium carbonate is sodium triazo carbonate. Five or so. That is NaCO3. Then decahydrate is 10 water. 10 water. Water hydrate means water, presence of water. Deca is 100, so uh, it's 10. So 10 water. Decahydrate, like this one now. Pentahydrate. Pent is um, 7, yes. Hex is 8. So pentahydrate is 7 hydrogen. Pentahydrate, no. Pent. 7 is hepta. So the hepta is 7. Pent is 5, sorry. Pent is 5, yes. Pent is 5. So for this one, I'm going to have that NA, NA is what? Is 20 what? 23. Sorry. Let me write it first. This is NA plus C plus 3 oxygen plus 10 into 2, 2 hydrogen plus oxygen. Okay. In fact, water is 18. You should know that water is 18 because water is a 2 times 1, 2 plus 16. That is 18. So water is always 18. So you should take note of that. Okay, so Na, Na sodium is 23, plus carbon is, 4, is 12, okay, plus 2, 3 into oxygen is uh, 16, okay, plus 10 into, I thought that water, water is 18, or let me just say 2 into 1, then plus 16. So if you do that, you are going to have um, 23 plus 12 plus um, 48. In fact, press everything together. This plus this plus this. Here should be 180. 18 times 10, 180. So if you do everything together, you are going to get um, 286 gram per mole. 286 gram per mole. Question number four. Question number four said copper sulfate. Copper sulfate. This one is carbonate. Carbonate is CO3. Sulfate is. Sulfate is like this, sulfate, sulfate is tetra, also sulfate 6. That is sulfate, that is in short form, we call it sulfate, okay? So this is a copper sulfate, that is Cu, uh, SO4. Uh, that is Cu2, 
2 plus plus SO4 2 minus. So they sorry 2 minus. So they cancel out each other. That is why you have Cu SO4. So you need to know what SO4 is. Yes, you need to know that. So um copper is what? 64 plus or let me write it down first. Copper plus sulfur Cu plus S plus 4 oxygen. That is what? Uh, 64 plus what? 32 plus 4 into what? Uh, oxygen is 16. So if you do everything, you are going to have... Hmm. Okay? So, okay, sorry, this is copper sulfate pentahydrate. That is five water. Don't forget that this is five water. So, this is uh, plus five water. And I thought that water is 18. So, five times 18. So, do everything and then get the final answer and write it for me at the comment section. Okay? So, I can clean. We are taking the first example. Right. The second example, example number two, they said one mole, one mole of a compound, one mole of a compound M in brackets of HCO3 close to, okay, has a mass of 16. 162 gram okay 162 gram per mole gram per mole or okay one mole means per it means per mole so it should be 160 gram okay 160 gram and then then I say calculate calculate the relative relative mass of m and they gave us, sometimes they will give you, sometimes they will not give you. They gave us H to be 1, C to be 12, and O to be what? 16. Okay? So we can say that let, let the relative atomic mass of M be X. Let it be X. So we are going to have that X... Okay, sorry. We are going to have M plus 2 of hydrogen plus 2 of carbon plus 6 of what? Oxygen. And everything here should be equal to what? That 162. Okay? So, if you put our M, that we say that it, in fact, let me put it as M. Or we have said that it is X, so let it be X. So, I have that what? X plus what? 2 into 1 plus what? 2 into 12 plus what? 6 into 16 is equal to 162. So I'm having that x plus, do everything here, you're going to have 112. 122 one, two, rather is equal to 162. So therefore, x is now what? 162 minus 122. Two. So I'm having 40. As simple as that. Okay? <clears throat> Question number 3. We are moving. Question number three. Question number three said, if the molecular mass of the molecular mass of Na two CO three dot X water. Okay, is 286 gram. Then find, find X. Solution. Now, don't forget that I told that water is 18. So I have that what? 2Na plus C plus 3 oxygen plus X of water is equal to that 286. Okay, so what do we have now? We now have that... Um, that is 2 times sodium is 23 
plus this man is 12 plus this is 3 times 16 plus x times what 18 i told you that water is 18 is equal to 286 so if you do everything here you are going to have 106 plus what 18x is equal to 286 so therefore 18x is equal to 286 minus 106. So 18x is equal to 180. So my x is equal to what? 180 divided by 18. So I'm having what? 10. So this is what? Decahydrate because it is 10. So as simple as that. So the next question said, if the relative molecular mass of an element is not a whole number, it can be deduced that the element is isotopic in nature we have told you that before so the next one we look at is mole we talked about atomic relative atomic mass relative molecular mass let's talk about mole mole all right let me take my time as well oh so this mole is going to be the next video so please thank you very much for watching and share to anyone that needs it. Comment, like, subscribe. God bless you.